If you watched the previous video, you're probably already aware of the basics of what attributes are. So what we've got, we've got two types of attributes. We've got what we call instance attributes, and we've got what we call class attributes. And I just want to go through the difference because it's very important this understood. So if I start by adding a few different attributes to our object here. So we've got at the minute name, health and power. So let's say we're going to go further with our game. Let's give it a um, role. So we'll have self dot role. We'll have that equal into role. There's nothing in there at the minute for role, but we'll come back to that. Uh, we can have self dot alive so we can have a Boolean. I'll try and think of a couple of different types of data. Um, so we'll have self dot alive equals alive and we'll pass it a true or false value. Hopefully we start alive. That'll be handy. Um, self dot bag. And we'll have an empty list. So then we can pick things up as we go about our game and add them to our bag. Um, and then we've got to choose how we're going to do this. So there's a couple of things I'm going to change here, actually. Let's go through them one at a time. So we'll keep health and power and name the same. That's fine because we've got some strings and some integers. We then get to role. So let's say this role is the hero. We then get to alive. Now, th there is a question with these attributes, whether you actually need to pass them or not. If it's something that you want to set at a certain thing at the start for every character, why why pass it at all if it's always going to start the same so in which case i could set this to true so i don't want it as a string i'll set it as true so every character will have this attribute but it's not needed to be passed the other one is the bag so we're making a bag attribute for everybody which we're going to use a list we could have used obviously other types of data structures and what I'm going to do is in the constructor here, I'm going to make it loop through some items that we might have received as part of the uh, build. So we're going to say um, for item in bag. Um, and then we're going to say self dot bag. Um, dot append item so what that'll do is that'll loop through we'll call this items so we'll say we've got our bag we're then going to loop through what's going to be passed to us as items we'll come back to this in a sec and we're going to append each item to the bag so what we need up here is we need power we're going to need roll we're going to also need let me wrap the text we're going to also need, um, we don't need a live. We're going to need, we don't need bag, but we are going to need items. Now, I would suggest this is where default parameters might come useful because some characters might start with um, some items and some might not. So we can have that set as an empty list to start with so our for loop won't break, but then we can choose whether we add it in here. So the only thing this character is missing is because items got a default, it's got the roll in. It's not, it would run like this. So when I run it, nothing's happening. So I've not used it, but I've got no error messages. Nothing's broken. If I want my hero to have some items, I just need to put a list and I just need to choose something. So I could have, I don't know, HP. Is that what they're called? HP pack, health pack, um, and uh, I don't know, a key. So I've now got two items. So if I run it again, nothing will happen. But again, it's not erroring. So I've got all of these different attributes. And these are known as instance attributes because they apply to this instance of the object. So just to show you it working. So if I print um, hero dot bag, for example, when I run it, I've got my bag with those items in. If I print hero dot alive, it will show you that's true. So that's the basics of instance attributes. But I just want to throw an extra attribute in here called a class attribute. So if I go up the top here and I say, right, the uncle, 
this is a really weird example that I wouldn't use, but the uncle of this is Dave. Now, what's going to happen is because I've put it up here, I will still be able to access it. So if I run hero.uncle, it is outputting Dave. The difference is this is going to apply to every object we make. So all of these have the potential to be unique for each object because they're built as part of the constructor. But Dave is going to be applied and shared across all of them. Okay, so some would argue I should put this up here because that's not unique and that everybody's going to start on true. So to show you, I'm going to make a villain. I'm going to make him exactly the same as the character, but the difference is we'll kill the villain. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to print the hero dot alive. And you can see that's true. And then we're going to print the villain dot alive. So it's true, true. But then we're going to set villain dot alive to equal false and then we'll print them again so what you can see there is the hero and the villain were both alive we then changed the villain to be dead so then the hero is still alive but the villain has changed to false so they are what's known as class attributes so they're where you want an attribute to be shared by everybody that's not going to be changed based on the running of this constructor here okay so again i could argue i could put the bag in there if i wanted to because at the start everybody has just got an empty bag and that's absolutely fine so what we've got here these are known as class attributes and these are all known as instance attributes okay so hopefully that's been a nice intro into class attributes and instance attributes and like I say, we're going to go further and build on methods and things like that next.